Welcome back. Last video, you just saw a quick introduction to making some simple variables. We did things like make integers that store numbers, and we even saw how you can make integers and do a little bit of math that's either easy math or a little bit of math that's hard math to do calculations, right? And see that it all works nicely. One thing we didn't mention was how to properly name your variables. So, name variables properly. Okay, this is a big idea in coding. Um, I'll tell you what a lot of students do. They're in a rush. They just want to get their program to work. So let's say they write a program that's supposed to calculate how much they're supposed to get paid that week from their part-time job. So they do something like this. They go, oh, okay, I'm going to work five hours. I'm going to get paid $10 an hour. And I want them to give me X times Y is my pay. And then go system out, print line. I get paid Z dollars. Okay, does the program work? Well, yeah, you make a variable in memory five, you make a variable in memory 10, you do another variable with a little calculation, and you get paid that much money. When we actually run this, oh, I had closed my stuff here. When we actually run it, yeah, I get paid $50, it works fine. The problem is, is that when another coder comes and takes a look at this program, they frown and go, there's a total beginner, poorly named variables, hard to read. I don't know what X is, I don't know what Y is, I don't know what Z is. Okay, it's a mystery. Only the coder really knows what that stuff represents. Even the coder themselves, if they go back a few months later and look at a big program and everything is named really poorly, it's impossible to tell what's going on. Okay, it makes it very hard for you or for somebody else to edit your code. So, to combat this, one requirement of all good programmers is you name your variables properly. So here's an example here. One way to do it is they go, hours worked. Now you don't make the names too long. Hourly pay and total pay. Now you'll notice I start with letters. Um, I do have two words there, but definitely don't do this. Don't put spaces or and don't put weird symbols, especially symbols that are already used in the language. So it's just nice. This system basically says every time you start a new word, you basically capitalize it. So hours worked, separates the words nicely visually, yet it's still one nice piece that describes exactly what you're trying to record. Okay, it's free to type extra letters. So type the extra letters and make your variables look good. Okay. Now, of course, when you get down here, we got to just change that to total pay. Obviously, the program still works just like before. Oh, what I do wrong? Oh, I forgot to do these ones. So hours worked times hourly pay. And you give it a run, and it's all good. Okay. This time, though, anybody looking at this, even a non-coder, is going to look at this, and they can probably figure out what your program is doing. Right? Right. The other system that some people use, um, but I don't think you see it as much, is they put the underscores. That's one symbol you can use. Whoops. I think it just sort of makes things look a little longer. But of course, let's get them all in here. And there we go. Is you put underscores between the words. And then you don't necessarily need the capital in there anymore because you have the underscore. It's a little more clear where the word is breaking. But... I think that's almost all fixed, and that should work too. And so what you do is you should choose which one uh, you want to do. Maybe ask your teacher, or obviously if your goal is to code in C++ instead of Java, go look at C++, you know what their standard is. But, you know, choose a way and uh, stick with it throughout all your code so it's very clear what you're doing. That's a little bit about naming. Uh, what are some other rules I can tell you before we end here? I guess we could tell you that you could always add numbers into your name. So you could say, uh, you could go total one, you know, you do some calculation. You could say total two, you know, is some other calculation. So numbers are allowed in two. But the rule is you do have to start with letters if you're going to use numbers in your variables. Uh, there's some other cases in Java we'll come across later on where we'll actually do something like this. You'll do all capitals, but, you know, We'll teach you about that later. For now, just stick with nice variables that look like this that are great descriptions of what you're keeping track of in memory. 
Thanks for watching.